Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, good to see you again. You were on for a few weeks. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Okay, this is show number 107 and going strong. We, um, the title of this show is We Could Not Have Chosen Otherwise. We Do Not Have a Free Will. Okay, and we'll, we'll get into that uh, in a little while, but first as we always do because there's so much confusion about our general topic among the public we're going to first explain what we mean by the term free will what what philosophers and scientists generally mean and then why this topic is so quintessentially absolutely important not just to our personal lives but to the entire world universe okay so um and now why don't you start us off when we say we have free will what, what, what do you, what do we mean uh, free will is the ability to make decisions 100% independent of your genetics and conditioning. Right. That's An my definition. Another way to say that, and we're going to say this in several different ways so you understand very well what we mean. Another way of describing as free will is like we would have a free will if we were able to choose our thoughts, feelings, and actions completely independent of things we can't control, like our genes and our environment, like um, like our unconscious. How we were raised. <clears throat> right. Conditioning. Yeah. Right. There's a third definition of free will we want to get into. It, it deals with responsibility. Why don't you explain that? Well, I still think human beings are pragmatically responsible, which means jail and punishments and rewards, but fundamentally they're not responsible, meaning at the end of your life, no one's going to judge your life and put you in heaven or hell for the rest of eternity. Right. In other words, like... And I do believe in responsibility, but blameless responsibility. Right. So in other words, like, yeah. we're not saying, we're not saying to the world, listen, we don't, nobody has a free will, we're free to do whatever we want, you know, because that, you know, that wouldn't work for anyone. What we're saying is, like, we don't have free will, so we don't essentially have fundamental responsibility. We're not fundamentally responsible for what no, we can't help but do. Right. But we have to kind of, like, uphold rules and we have to treat each other well and, you know... We have to kind of like assume responsibility, you know, and hold others pragmatically, mm -hmm. you know, blamelessly responsible. Okay. Um, all right. So that, I think, you know, that covers basically what people There'll mean. There'll be a responsibility with or without free will. We want to get rid of the stigma of hate. And, you know, if someone does something wrong, you can't really hate them, but you can fear them. So they have to be removed without the stigma of hate. Exactly. So if they're in jail, you don't hate them. You can feel that maybe sorry for them at that and he, fate was unfortunate for them, but they didn't do it of their own free will, so... Right, even for ourselves, when we do stuff wrong, because, like, if we had a free will, is another way of understanding this, if we had a free will, we would never do anything wrong. We would choose to always be good, we would be angels. But invariably, we do stuff wrong. So if we believe we have free will, we believe we're fundamentally responsible, a lot of times we punish ourselves weeks, months, years, decades after whatever has been done. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's also... It this also could be a topic for another show, but a life, a planet without free will is a much better planet to live on. Oh, yeah. It's more intelligent, more compassionate. God and you don't hate yourselves or others, like we were just saying. So Absolutely. All right. Now, so let's go right into this. Why is this show so monumentally important to, to the history of the world and, and the future we're, we're going into? Well, a belief in free will touches everything we do, from school to criminals to morality to how we feel about ourselves, how we resent people, jealousy, guilt. I mean, this topic encompasses everything. Absolutely. Everything. Oh, yeah. You have kids. Your kid does something wrong. You attribute free will to them. You get really angry with them. You don't just punish them and, like, dock them or something like that. You get viscerally, emotionally angry. You, you, you know... You become abusive just because of the solution. And society assumes that we have free will, and it's a false premise. Right. And it's an unexamined false faith. I mean, well, let's examine it. I mean, why is it just a given that we have free will? You, you read something to me once that the Supreme Court said it's a universally accepted 
idiom or axiomatic that human it's 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 not it's a universal uh, fairy tale that's what a good it is. point that's a good point remember this, you read something like that sam harris's uh, book yes in yeah. 1978 yeah I think that, it was, that, right. the supreme court decided that we have free will absolute nonsense and and that'll tell you that our whole criminal justice system is founded on a myth it said something was like a universal truth or something yeah yeah and it's, it's, and it's a universal fairy tale is what it is right it's kind of like the supreme court saying you know like god took a clump of clay yeah, right. and molded at Adam, then he pulled a rib out of Adam to make the first woman Eve. Okay, that's how backward and wrong so it is. So to answer your question why it's important, everything's based on this assumption, like you just said, from the Supreme Court down, how you treat other people, like a boyfriend, a girlfriend, how, how you treat other people, why is it important? It's the biggest thing ever. It is. To get rid of this crazy thing that the people have free will. That's how big it is. Right. And what, I want you to answer that. Why is this important? Because I get that a lot. Why, why is this the biggest thing yeah. ever? Because, again... Our fundamental perspective on who we are, who we other, who other people are, couldn't be more wrong. If we think that we and other people are in any way responsible, if, if we think that anything we do, say, think, feel is in any way up to us, you know, we, we're completely wrong. So, like, basically this show... Total nonsense and total insanity. Yeah, underst understanding that we don't have a free will <laughs> amounts to a new consciousness, a new correct human consciousness that's how big this is okay i'm glad we at the beginning of every show we define free will and say why it's important oh yeah because we we to 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 a lot of people like you know you go on youtube a lot of people say well i have free will if i um right they don't define it the right way we do no one most... guy told me he believes in free will because he believes in personal responsibility right we're not saying there's no personal responsibility just pragmatically there is but not in the end you know not going to all of eternity in heaven or hell how could God or anybody judge a man's life if their will is not free? Exactly. So we do believe in personal, personal, blameless responsibility. Right. I don't know which and again, some you know. So I see um, the light. Yeah. Some see the light. <laughs> some people will say, "I have a free will because I can choose." It's not about choice. We make choices all the time. Technically, we That's don't even make thing. choices, but you know, metaphorically, colloquially, we make choices. But it's the fact that we, these choices aren't in any way up to us. We they're compelled. Let's, talk, let's say that slowly. The fact is, just because we can I talk really Absolutely. make choices does not mean you have free will. I don't want to hear that again, nice and slow. Just because you make choices does not mean they are free will choices. Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sick and tired. And then there's the free will double talk. And, you know, sometimes I have free will and sometimes I don't. I mean, you've heard this craziness. Oh, yeah. When I, when do, I do something good, I deserve a medal or a raise. When something terrible happens, it's God or another person. People just take it whenever it's most convenient. They have a double talk uh, hypocrisy with free will. I don't know. It's a crazy relationship. Right. You, it's whenever it's convenient for you to have free will, you haven't. Whenever, anyway, I don't want to. Right. Let's go into the topic. Yeah, and the topic is like, all right, a lot of philosophers, scientists, they understand how if everything has a cause, you know, free will is impossible. And the, the basic explanation for that is like, if all of our decisions have a cause, have causes, then the causes of our decisions have causes, and the causes of those causes have causes, and the causes of those causes have causes, and these causes are always going back moment by moment in time. You could basically say that the cause of anything that happens in the universe is the universe at the previous state, you know, the previous state of the universe. But anyway, people, a lot of scientists, philosophers, are unable to accept that. You know, like, they, they can't see a world, they can't accept a world where everything is like a movie. So they try to come up with these formulations, these kind of arguments that, that seem to make sense, but when you examine them, they, they don't make sense at all. The, the one we're going to examine today is called the principle of alternative possibilities, otherwise known as, like, I could have chosen otherwise. You know, if I could have chosen otherwise than I did, that means I have free will. Mm. Okay, that's the argument. So not believing in free will should get rid of the emotion of regret. Oh, God. That's yeah. a free will emotion. Yeah. And jealousy and other things. So if you could have done otherwise, just say no to free will. If you could have done <laughs> otherwise, why didn't you? <laughs> yes. Let me talk to the camera. If you could have done otherwise, why didn't you? Answer that. All right. Absolutely. Let the viewer think. If you could have done otherwise, why didn't you? You tell me why. Right. Well, why didn't they? And I'll tell you why you couldn't have done otherwise, because that's what we're getting to. Because exactly. 
In order for you to have done otherwise... The entire state of the universe at that time would have had to have been different. That's there for one. There you go. I'm sorry, That's I'll, let one. You, I'll let you answer. <laughs> the entire, as, as my no co-host and Al just said, for you to have done otherwise, the entire universe would have to have evolved differently than it did. You would have had to have been a completely different or fundamentally or at least in some way different person that That's you turned right. out to be. The world would have to have to be. Also, many people have regret where they say, well, I should have or could have done that otherwise in the past, but you didn't have all the information back then that you have now, so you did the best you could at the time. All right. So, with no free will, you get rid of re regret and you don't hate yourself because you could not have done otherwise. What you're alluding to here is the number one argument pro free will is I could have done otherwise, right? Isn't that what you're. I mean, that's I just that's one of the big ones, yeah. So. You're writing here that the num one of the number one arguments for free will is that they could have chosen otherwise, right. and you're saying people couldn't have. Right. I mean, and as a matter of fact, this idea that we could have chosen otherwise is the free will illusion. In other words, they're basically saying, well, I've got a free will because I've got a free will. And that's not an argument. That's not a philosophical argument. That's not a scientific argument. Let's... And now let's go through this again because yeah. this is very important that they understand why no one could actually have done otherwise. Let's take it from the big bang. I don't understand how people don't get this. It's so simple. Right. They get confused when they read philosophy with like quantum mechanics and subatomic particle physics. This is so easy to figure out with it, the cause and effect. And also, you couldn't have done otherwise. It doesn't, folks, it doesn't get more simple than this. I hear you. Explain to our audience, start with the Big Bang event, because like anything that happened well, before the Big Well, I don't like to do that because I'm only concerned about a, the lifespan of a human. I know uh, you like to go to... All right, well, I, let me do this, because this okay. is important. I know, right, and I'll do is, just... All right, consider the Big Bang is the first physical, universal event uh, about which we have any knowledge. Before the Big Bang, who knows what happened, but presumably something must have happened. But anyway, starting with the Big Bang, okay? Right. Then you have the second moment of, of existence, whether you want to call it a second, a millisecond, whatever it is. The second moment of existence was completely dependent and was caused by that first Big Bang explosion because that's all there was. That's all there was in the universe. So you have the state of the universe of the Big Bang causing the next state of the universe, a, a next, the next moment And the later. next moment being completely dependent on the prior moment. Exactly. Keep going. So Keep then going. you have the second moment of the universe completely causing the third. Right. The third completely causing the fourth. Now here's something else to remember. We're talking about the entire universe, right? But we're also talking about everything that happens within the universe. In other words, so the only argument that someone could make is that human beings are outside the universe, which is crazy. Yes. So if human beings are in the universe, then every moment is dependent on the moment before. It's very simple. That's, that's all right. Yeah, and that's going to lead into another argument we have. So essentially, yeah, again. So the only way someone could win a free will argument is saying, I'm outside the universe. How, right. How's that possible? It's not possible. So if you're in the universe, it's one moment is dependent on the moment before stretching all the way back, like you said, to inf infinity b before, back to the Big Bang and before, and going forward, everything's predetermined because every moment, right, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, all right, so that's the real world. Makes too much sense. It's too easy. It is that's easy. That's why people don't get it. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's too and simple. It, it is easy. You know, one moment leads to the next. That's what it's causality. And we're not talking about predictability. That's something different. Yes. It's not predi too many variables, but we're talking about deter the deterministic nature of reality just because something's determined doesn't mean it's predictable. People confuse that. It's so easy. Exactly. All the variables are there. Too many to number. And, and, and even like, you know, you might have Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, oh, yeah, don't get me you know, at a quantum level. But even, even then, quantum uh, phenomenon is completely causal. You know, people who think that quantum particles move from one place to another in an un uncaused manner don't understand quantum mechanics, period. All right. You just led into our next uh, point. Some Ooh. people say, all right, well... In this universe, in this, in the real world, we could not have done otherwise because of this causality that spans back to and originated in the Big Bang. Right. Now we're going to deal with the contention, well, how about it was a hypothetical? How about if it wasn't in this world? Okay, how about like... What are no, you talking about, It's Willis? crazy. I know. It's completely <laughs> crazy. You ever see that show in the 80s? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What you talking about, George? <laughs> All right, I hear you. And here's the thing. All what right, are you talking about? Let's Different. let's let's give them the benefit of that. Let's. I love let's, there's no script. Let's say that there's this universe that exists outside of ours, or that we could exist outside of this real world universe. We're gonna consider 
a decision that's made otherwise in, in this hypothetical universe. Okay. All right. So, like, basically, we've chosen otherwise, not in the real world, but in hypothetical world, but we've made a choice. We've made a choice in this hypothetical universe, and this hypothetical universe has laws also. It's also causally, causally governed. It's not a hypothetical un universe where things are completely random and indeterministic, okay, because that doesn't even make sense. So the, ar the, the answer, the refutation to this argument, you know, that we could have done otherwise in a different universe, is that our choice in a different universe would have a causal history going back to the Big Bang of that universe. Oh, God, you've gone nuts. <laughs> Sounding like Deepak Chopra, you're talking about other universes. I am just want to know, from the time of inception to a human being's death, which is usually about 0 to 100 to 110 years, or usually 70 for men and 80 for women, do we have free will? The answer is clearly no. To start going into other universes and what happened before we were born, all the way back to the Big Bang, it's all, it makes perfect sense to me. But let's just start with this. We didn't choose our parents. Right. We didn't choose how we were raised for about 12 to 15 years. So we didn't self-create ourselves. So we go back, cause and effect, go back to the day of con conception, whatever our mother ate, smoked, we were being conditioned. All the way, cause and effect, one thing leads to another, one moment at a time, depend, all the way to our deaths, usually 70 for men, 80 some odd for women. That makes sense. You're going be before the Big Bang, bef before the universe into another universe. That all makes sense. But I'm just, you know, I don't really know about, I mean, I just want to know, do human beings have free will in their lifespan? No. Exactly. And, and what you're So when you confuse to... people and say back to before the Big Bang, I, I know what you get, but I know what you're talking, what you're getting at. But I want this to be no free will 101. You're like, you know, right. well, here, so but, other universes. Yeah, yeah, all right. So, all right. So we can say you're right. We, we can say that. Isn't that I, all you really care about? And even yeah. if you say things are random, there's, we just want to refute free will. So no, I know. But, but like, I know Sam Harris doesn't get it. But, and we don't believe in randomness either. But if our audience does believe in randomness and the quantum mechanics indeterminate model, that doesn't prove free will. It doesn't right. help your cause. But here's, so you might yell things at us if you ever meet us in public. It's not helping you. Here's, here's why so I... So what you say about this topic, the only argument that could really prove free will is I could have... I like this show because I like the fact that I just... I get it and, you know, I don't really review it, but I, the fact is if you could have done otherwise, that would prove free will. I, that's a very good... But again, we just showed that you couldn't... Yeah, but it, that's something people can understand. They understand, but it's, it's a reflection. Yeah. It's, a, it's a semantic variation or version of the free will illusion. They're just changing the words so around. So let the audience say, okay, audience, think of something you could have done otherwise. Give them, you know, think of something in your past that you regret, that you wish you had done otherwise. Or, okay, let them think. Why didn't you? <laughs> right. In other words, like, they went to a certain college instead of or a different college. Or they bought the wrong car, they have the wrong wife or the wrong girlfriend, or the couch you're sitting on, you don't like it, or the shirt you're wearing. Uh, you could have worn a different, we made, you could have had something, you got in a car accident. Why didn't you do otherwise? Let them answer that in their own heads. Yes, but they can't respond to this. I know. Uh, how about you? I mean, think of something in your life that you regret. Yeah. I regret, what do I regret? I regret a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I regret, like involving myself in politics for four years you know <laughs> so why did you why did you not why didn't you not do that All right. why, why didn't you do it for one year right um i you couldn't do it you couldn't have done otherwise basically yes in order to have made a different decision at the time that i or anyone else made a decision in the past we would have had to have felt differently. Would we would have to have had different had information different available? Oh yeah, we it always have limited uh, information available at every any moment in time. As we get older and go through life, we have regrets because the future self is telling the younger self, "Why didn't?" But the future self has new more information about how you felt afterwards. That's for one. Exactly, exactly. And again, the more simple reason why we couldn't have done otherwise is because, like, even if we did, you know. In, in some bizarre universe, do otherwise, there would be a reason or a cause for that, and there would be a cause for that. And now I gotta explain this because the All reason right. I go Talk back a slower, just nice and easy. Okay, okay. thank you. The the reason I go back Not softer, slower. <laughs> the reason if he had free will, we'd make this perfectly clear. <laughs> the reason we go back to before the person was born is because, like, if we go back for the origin of 
you know, the chain of cause and effect that leads to all of our decisions before the person is born, then not only do we not have a free will, we don't even have a will. Because technically to have a will is, to, is the power to choose, okay? So if the Big Bang is choosing everything we do, it's not our choice. It's the choice or of the Or the story Bang. of creation for yeah. those other viewers. Okay. Doesn't matter how you think the universe started. Still cause and effect. Right, because, yeah. Don't just focus on the Big Bang. I know I like the Big Bang, too, but other people think of aliens, evolution, creationism. It doesn't matter what story of creation you believe in. They all lead. It's like all leads, all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to no free will. No matter what road you come up with, there's no free will. I don't care what fairy tale nonsense insanity you've been taught. First of all, everything's conditioning, so, yeah. Yeah, and, and again, I'm glad but you brought up the religion. I'm glad. So I'm, whatever you believe is a conditioned response, a, a hedonic imperative. Right. Okay. Right. With ahead. religion, okay. First of all, free will isn't even in the Bible. Saint Paul, writing to the Romans, he gets it. He's saying, "Wait a minute, what's going on here? I want to do what's right. I want to do what's good, but sometimes I can't." Mm -hmm. Saint Paul talking to the Roman Romans, he got it. Was it Saint Augustine? No, no, Saint Augustine, oh, yeah, like. Right much later, around 380 A.D. or 580 A.D., something like, he coined the term free will. There actually was somebody before him, like, you know, I, I don't know. But, but anyway, the idea is, like, there, it's not in the Bible, but let's say, all right, let's say Adam and Eve, whatever. Let's say we accept the biblical version of creation with Adam and Eve and stuff. Adam and Eve are not subject to causality. In other words, those people back then were not exempt from the laws of nature. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like, so like if Adam, you know, Ate from the tree of the knowledge of the good. You know, good no, they're evil. subject to causality. He had a he had a reason for doing. It. He, was, his, he listened to the voice of his wife. Right. I read that chapter. What I'm saying is and like the wife was caused by this beguiled by the snake. There is cause and effect. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you said they were. Oh, you said not. They're not immune from the law. Right. Exactly. So That's so right. like still so let's say you buy into the creation story. Okay. Adam will leave the whole garden of Eden. So if you make a decision right now, you can trace that decision with its causal antecedents, cause and effect, going back to Adam and Eve before. So basically what happened back then is completely determining your religious decision. And man did not self-cause himself. God created Adam and Eve. There was a cause. Human beings do not self-cause anything, not even a single no, thought. No, you can't. You can't yeah. A single thought. Right. All right. So as that's I, I don't another want thing. to curse. No, you can't. Not even a single freaking thought. Yes. Nothing can be self-caused. Nothing. We, Not even in the story of creation is anything self-caused. And what? Yeah, because sometimes you know. Let's stick with the show. People will say like, "All right, well, not everything's causal. You know, not everything is cause and effect. You know, some things are indeterministic. Some things are random. Some things happen without." That's absurd, first of all, because I think about it. What does it mean to have something that has not been caused? You know, in our world, our reality, our science, our strongest empirical science shows us that everything has a cause and i want to how do we know this if you don't know the cause that doesn't mean it doesn't exist exactly you're but just in your subconscious how do we unconscious semi-conscious you're not aware of it but it has to have a cause how do we know things can't happen without a cause i'll tell you how we, we can know this oh please tell me yes all right without causality you got to understand the universe changes in other words we're talking you're listening this show is going on stuff is happening particles moving around if the universe didn't change, we'd all be stuck at the Big Bang the size of a pea, the tiny little, you know, and no, it would be frozen eternally in inactivity, okay? So the first fundamental process of the universe is that it changes. What is change? Change is simply one particle, one state of the universe, one thing being at one moment, what one place at one moment, and in a different place in a different moment. That's all that's happening. We're like mass energy moving through time, in you know through through space in time so all right so all right but we, re we really need the audience to understand that not believing in free will really makes your life a lot better yes it's the best remedy for everything so if you're watching commercials on other channels and they're selling you sneakers and pants and vitamins and everybody's selling something to solve a problem to make others give me your money i'll solve a problem and buy my whatever uh fragrance or whatever but really, all you need is to not believe in free will. It's the actual number one remedy. We should have a Super Bowl ad next Super Bowl. How to feel better about everything. Don't believe in free will. You don't have to buy all these products for faster and faster phones and faster computers and iPad. You keep getting something, then you buy it, 
and a few months later you want the faster version, you buy it. You, people, you're going nowhere. You're on this treadmill. If you don't believe in free will, what we're selling will cure you. Do Wait. not believe in free will. I, I know this is off the cuff. But I don't get it, but, but keep out. If we did a commercial for a product, our product will help you the best. If you don't believe oh. in free will, you won't feel badly about yourself. You won't have jealousy. You won't rank destinies. You won't have resentment, guilt. You won't hate yourself, other people. You might fear other people. Won't hate. And I'm saying all these products in this uh, capitalistic, materialistic culture, you buy something, and then you want the faster model a few weeks, or, and a bigger house, better wife. You're never going to get anywhere. What we're selling is, is free, really. Just listen to and believe that you don't have free will, and you'll feel a lot better. You exactly. make a mistake, you won't hate yourself. Again, yeah, feel, you know, understanding free will is illusion. You don't have any logical reason to blame others or yourself for anything. That's, that's absolution. I'm that's saying like, to look at no free will as a product uh, on the marketplace. That, dude, We've got like health. Okay. we've got a little under two minutes. Let's do do some commercials. I just did a commercial. <laughs> All right, no, no, for our shows. All right, this show is on every right, Thursday here in White Plains. It's also on Wednesdays now in White Plains at seven thirty. It's on and, both nights. Well, yeah, we got two nights here in White Plains, and like occasionally it's on in Manhattan. My to commercial is like I thought I was doing commercial before, is that the belief in free will is such a harmful belief. Oh, uh, there we are. That's such a harmful belief. You don't have to buy products to feel. I mean, anytime you buy a new TV, you want the next new model, the new car. You're never going to get anywhere if you believe in free will. Because why? Tell the audience why free will. This is my why is free will a harmful belief? Free will is for a your harmful, health, for your mental health, and your physical health. It's harmful because it necessitates, encourages negative, aggressive, hostile, unpleasant emotions. And it implies intent, premeditated. Someone does something to you of their own free will. It implies a nastiness, and it, but if they had an, made an honest, honest mistake and did the best they could at the time and still hurt you, that's a different kind of hurt than she, he or she pre meant to do under their own free will. Once you see that they had no choice in the matter, their back was up against the wall, and they were checkmate and had no choice but to make that decision— it's a little, not I'll say a little, but it could be a lot easier to forgive. Definitely oh, a little. Oh, yeah. You know, Less violence. You know, physical. Your, your husband comes home from yeah, late. 20 seconds. 20 and seconds. you begin to become angry. You find out, like, you know, there's a big traffic jam in, in traffic. You realize it wasn't his fault, yeah. so you don't blame him. This same thing applies to everywhere. All right, we got to go. Thanks for watching. If we we'll had free will, we would have made this show a lot better than it was. We it was have just good chosen. enough. We're I making know, history. I know, I'm we just saying. <laughs>